So a few months ago, I was trading with somebody going through the binder and when I got to the last page, they said, those aren't for trade. And I asked why and he said, because those are counterfeits, okay? So I decided to give him some trade value for his counterfeits a dollar a piece. That way I could make this video where we go over these counterfeits and exactly how you can tell the difference between those and the real thing. And I have to say, it's very interesting. After looking into them, it seems as though these two counterfeits are from two different counterfeiting print runs. So let's talk about how to tell. Okay, so this thought seize shows us something right away about identifying fake cards. The best way to do it is to put a real card right next to it. Sometimes they jump out at you. So you notice that the thought seize on the right is the fake one. It has a way different color from the actual one. But if you didn't have an actual one for reference, it would be a lot harder to tell. Now, the other thing about that thought seize is that if you look around the border of the card, it's not actually all the way black. It's like a very dark gray. And these are two things that jump out at you right away. I would also like to point out that a different coloration is not necessarily proof that a card is fake. You need to do more because different printers might have different amounts of ink currently when this card was printed, so on and so forth. So sometimes for real cards, they can have different colorations, but this is a good start to tip you off. Now, before moving on in our examples, I wanna talk about the printing process of magic cards, and this will crystallize to you why you look for the things that you look for. Okay, so when you're printing on an industrial scale, the way that it works is, is that you print one color at a time on each sheet using a printing press. So for example, you might print out all the yellow, then the green, then the magenta, then the dark blue, then the teal, and then the red. Now once you've got all of those together, the pattern is called a rosette pattern, okay? Now on this example, I made it very big and obvious, but if you look at a real magic card and you were to, you know, use a jeweler's loop on it, you would see the same rosetting pattern, but just much, much smaller. Now this is great for just pumping out things very fast with nice gradient textures. Now what it doesn't do well is make very sharp lines because it's all a mixture of dots. So what they do is, is then they do a final printing of black, which gives you that sharp border, sharp text, sharp outlines to different things in the card frame. Now, the reason that this process is important is because these counterfeiters don't always put in the effort and money required to do this final printing in black. And that can be one of the big difference between low level counterfeits and real cards. Now I'm going to show images of the counterfeit and real card under an old jeweler's loop. And after 10 seconds, I'll tell you which is real, which is fake, and whether or not I consider the counterfeit to pass inspection on that image. If you want more time to assess the images, just hit that pause button on the video and take your time. If you want a nice jeweler's loop, they are very cheap and give even more detail than you can see in this video. However, we just don't need that much detail to tell if a card is fake. Ready? Let's start.
Here's a real Theros Thoughtseize. Now I'm going to perform the bend test on this. The idea of the bend test is that you should be able to take a card and bend it lengthwise so that both ends touch and then unbend it and you shouldn't have a crease in the center. Now as you can see, this Thoughtseize passes that test easily, so let's move on to the counterfeit. So here is the counterfeit Thoughtseize. Now, it also passes the bend test, which is pretty interesting. Most people would be like, okay, well, that means bend test. Obviously, counterfeiters have moved beyond it, but it's actually not true. So the amazing thing about this is that when I did this, it felt like 10 times more difficult to bend this card than the actual magic card. And therefore, I was able to tell a very huge difference that proved that one of them was counterfeit. The much more convincing and well-made Snapcaster fake also passed the bend test. However, it was much, much, much more difficult to bend, and it was very obvious that it was not the same as a normal magic card. The next test for counterfeits is very easy to do, but one of the best in my opinion, and that is the light test. Now, all you have to do for this is to take the flash from your camera phone, for example, keep it on, and move the card in front of it. Now, magic cards have an inside layer, which is blue, and this makes it so that there's a slight blue tint to all of the light that passes through. In addition, on a real card, you should basically be seeing both sides of the card simultaneously, and a lot of light passes through. Counterfeits tend to not show so much light, and this is perfectly shown here. There is so much less light passing through this card, and it is especially obvious when you're actually doing it in person. Now the Snapcaster counterfeit fails just as spectacularly as the one of Thoughtseize, which is to say that I think that the light test is a great way to test for counterfeit cards. It's very easy, it doesn't damage the cards, you can just use your phone instead of any fancy jeweler's loop or anything like that. This next test is called the RIP test, and I would say with all the previous tests combined, you should probably never really need to resort to the RIP test. But if you are, you know, trading in a bunch of cards or something like that and there's huge volumes involved, you might want one more piece of data to definitively say that something is a fake, and this might help you do that. So the rip test is to rip a card in half, and when you lay down those fake pieces next to a real piece, you'll see that fake cards tend to have black inner cores, whereas a real card has a blue inner core. Now, I'm actually not sure why counterfeiters have a hard time replicating this. It seems like such an easy thing to do, but counterfeits do not have blue cores as a general rule. So if you need just that one more piece of information, the rip test is a possibility, but don't go ripping other people's cards to prove that they're fakes. I would like to finish this video by ranking these in the order of most convincing tests to least convincing tests. The first one is the light test. If a card fails the light test, which is very easy to do, then it is guaranteed to be fake. Next is the jeweler's loop. As printing gets better and better, it may be harder to spot these minute differences in the printing quality, but it will be very hard to do it all at once, so the jeweler's loop will remain a very strong way to detect counterfeits. The next one is the bend test. This allows us to basically check if the cardstock that they're using seems similar to the actual cardstock of Magic cards. In most cases, it's a bit thicker, it's a bit tougher, and that makes it Kind of obvious that it's fake. The next one is the rip test. It is only so low because I don't understand how at some point there won't be just cardstock with blue cores in it and then the rip test will fall in value very significantly. Uh, until then it's a pretty good test but it also destroys the cards which ain't so great. Now the most weak test is looking for changes in discoloration or glossiness between cards. Um, this can be because of changing ink levels as a print run is going. And as far as the glossiness goes, we've all seen in like promo cards and stuff like that, things from commander boxes, 
where the glossiness level is just really different from other sets and therefore is not that great of an indicator. For cards from the first few sets, such as a Black Lotus, you need an expert in old card evaluations to determine if a card is fake. There were a lot of variables in printing back then, and some strangely printed cards are actually real. If you feel like you can navigate counterfeits well after this video, hit that like button for the knowledge drop. If you want to make sure you catch all of the content from the best magic channel on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. As always, I'll see you in our next video.